Hello everyone, I'm Brian Zhang and welcome back to another CNCM lecture. Today's lecture will be on coordinate bashing, which is a very useful technique in competition math. So coordinate bashing is when you take a geometry problem and place it onto the Cartesian plane by assigning coordinates to each point. And it's much easier to use uh, than using standard techniques such as similar triangles, angle chasing, and those kinds of things. And it's much more convenient uh, to come up with a coordinate batching solution, uh, at least to think of a way to come up with a coordinate batching solution, than uh, a more standard solution. And it is slightly time consuming, and it's easy to mess up because you will be doing a lot of computations, but it's a lot easier to give a solution. And usually it's not always a good idea to do this first. It's a good, it's a good idea to try to uh, apply more standard synthetic techniques to simplify a problem and then try to uh, compute the rest. Like for example, on the 2021 Amy 1 problem 2, what some people did was they just directly went to chord bashing and they ended up spending 20 minutes solving extremely complicated quadratics when you could have uh, just applied similar triangles and it was like two linear equations. So a tip, some tips for coordinate bashing is many people, they think that coordinate bashing is a no brain technique and that it just involves blindly making computations and you don't need to use your brain uh, uh, in any way. That's incorrect. You need to make sure to not turn off your brain because uh, you need to use your brain to know what to set the origin as. Uh, because if you set the correct good point as the origin, then and then you set up the geometry diagram correctly, then that means you'll ha you won't have to spend as much time calculating the points and the uh, computations will be much nicer and much uh, less uh, easy to mess up. And ha having th this right setup will save you tons of time. You also need to make sure to have a plan. Whenever you decide to use coordinates on a problem, you should try to come up with a plan on how you will calculate each point and how you will extract the answer to the problem. And this is important so you can try to get a sense of how long it will take you to do this problem and whether it's a better idea to move on to another problem or try to find some kind of synthetic solution. And you need to make sure to know when to apply coordinates. If you have like a lot of right angles, uh, lots of lines, and like problems where you're given triangle side limbs, it's usually a good idea to use coordinates. Uh, some things that are harder to deal with uh, are in centers, multiple circles, and weird angle conditions. So angle conditions, uh, they are hard to deal with, but if they can be reduced to something like the angle bisector theorem, so we can relate stuff with Angle, uh, side lengths instead of angles, uh, or cyclic quadrilaterals, or things like that, then it's much easier to use it, use than if you just left it as the way it, it was. So if you're given a nice central circle, then it's a good idea to set that circle at the, set the center of that circle at the origin. So it's much easier to uh, work with the equation of that circle. And for obvious reasons, uh, knowledge of standard uh, geometry theorems such as Heron's uh, formula, the Pythagorean theorem, angle bisector theorem, those things uh, will be incredibly useful. And if you're given a triangle of three side lengths, then you can use Heron's to calculate its area and then calculate the altitude of one of its sides. So you can place the triangle onto the coordinate plane by setting the origin as the foot of the altitude. Okay, so now some theorems. So the first one is Shoeway Sphere. So the Shoeway Sphere is a formula for calculating the area of polygon when you're given the coordinates of the polygon. And it's pretty simple. So uh, what you do is you just write the coordinates uh, onto your paper like this, and then you draw a shoeway. So that's why, uh, that's why it's called shoeway, like this. You just draw the shoeways on your paper, and then and then you write the product. So x two times y one right here, x three times y two, x one times y three, and then for this, this is um, x one times y two x2 times y3, 
and x3 times y1. And then you add everything up and uh, subtract this sum from uh, this sum over here from over here, and then take the absolute value. The more general formula is uh, one half times, uh, sorry. The more general formula is uh, one half times x1, y2 plus x2, y3, all the way to uh, x, n, y1 minus uh, x2, y1 minus x3, y2 minus all the way to um, x1, y, n. It's just this, and this is the area. So that's shoelace theorem. The next one is uh, pointy line theorem. It's useful for finding the finding the distances from points to lines, as the name suggests. And if you're given a bunch of distances from points to lines in a problem, where uh, and you don't exactly know how to deal with them, point to line is usually it, it usually indicates for you to use point to line. And if you're uh, using it with variables, then it is pretty messy. So you need to make sure to like uh, be careful and try to avoid making too bashy, uh, avoid making equations that are too bashy. And it's derived from finding the equation of a perpendicular line through the point in Pythagorean theorem. So what it is, if you're, if you're given a point p equals x0 comma y0, and you want to find the distance to a line uh, ax plus by plus c is equal to zero, then the distance is equal to the absolute value of a x zero plus b y zero plus c over square root of a squared plus b squared. So that's a uh, point to line. Okay, so now it's time for some examples. So in this example, uh, you're given the side lengths of a triangle, uh, 13, 14, 15, and you're told to find the area formed by the triangle uh, HIM, where H is the orbit center, I is the in center, and M is the midpoint of BC. So as usual, we'll, we'll be setting A as 0, comma A, and B as B, comma 0, C as C, comma 0. So since this is a 13, 14, 15 triangle, we can draw the, we, we can draw something like this. Or this is, or this is the origin right here. And then this is the 5, 12, 13. And this is a 9, 12, 15 triangle. So it'll look something like this. So now um, uh, what you can do is set uh, the following things. A equals uh, 0, comma, 12. B equals negative 5, comma, 0. And C equals 9 comma 0 and then and then it's pretty easy to see that m is the midpoint of as m is the midpoint of bc then it's just negative 5 plus 9 over 2 so 2 comma 0 now um it's also well known that the in center uh, sorry the in radius of a 13 14 15 triangle is 4. so so uh, what we can do with that is we can calculate the uh, we can calculate the um, uh, y coordinate of the in center, and that's obviously just going to be four because uh, the, that's the distance from the in center to the side BC. So the in center will look something like this, and then after that you can just use the angle bisector theorem to to calculate the angle bisector theorem on angle um, BAC to calculate the line that the in center will lie on. And you find that the in center is 1, 5. Another way is you can use a formula for, so if the triangle is like this, and this this is a point, then, then you can use a formula BD is equal to um, the semi perimeter minus side uh, minus side of uh, BC, 
so, so you can use that formula to get that BD is equal to, so, sorry, I meant side AC. So S minus B, and this is equal to 5. So the in center is 1, comma uh, 4. Okay, so now for the orthocenter, we can uh, drop the altitude from B to C A, and then find the intersection of that with the A altitude. So it's pretty straightforward to calculate um, the equation of this altitude right here, uh, because it passes through point B and is perpendicular to line AC. And you can use that to calculate that the orthocenter is uh, 0, 15 over 4 by intersecting that with the line y equals, uh, sorry, x equals 0. So then after that, we can just apply shoelace on, um, uh, here I'll erase some stuff. Uh, we apply shoelace on the coordinates 2, comma, 0, uh, 0, 15 over 4, uh, 1, comma, 4, and 2, comma, 0. And then after this, we'll get the answer of 17 over 8. So the next one, um, this is from the 2020 AMC 10A problem 20. So you're given a quadrilateral ABCD and some nice conditions with its angles and some length conditions. So what so what, what you're going to want to do is uh, you the first thing that uh, I thought about when I solved this problem was setting C as the origin, uh, but and then you can do coordinates from there. But there's actually a better way to do this. Instead, if you look at um, if you look at line AC, and we're told that angle ABC is equal to 90, and we're also given the length of uh, line AC, which means we can the angle ABC equals 90 condition motivates us to set the origin as a midpoint of AC because that way you can draw a circle. Um, you, you can draw a circle centered at the origin with radius of AC over 2, and B will be, lie on that circle. So what we can do is we have something like this. So B is over here. This is A, E, uh, C, and D. So what we do is we set uh, E, so A is negative 10, comma zero, C is 10, comma zero, uh, E is negative five, comma zero, and since CD is 20, I'm sorry, 30, and AC is perpendicular to DC, then D is equal to uh, 10, comma 30. So now we let um, B be the intersection of AE with uh, the circumcircle of ABC, and then in that way, uh, since we know the circumcircle of ABC is centered at the origin and has radius 10, then the circumcircle ABC is just um, x minus, sorry, uh, it's just uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to 100, which means we can calculate the uh, coordinates of B uh, through um, uh, by calculating line DE, and then and then after that we can just uh, calculate our intersection with some basic algebra, and then from there uh, we get that x is equal to negative eight or zero. So so that means uh, so, so when x is equal to zero, it's this intersection. So we can toss that out. So what we want is x equals to negative 8. And then that means that y is equal to negative 6. And then uh, we can finish using shoelace on ABCD, which gives the answer 360. Hooray. OK, and now for the last example, this is a problem that some of you may be slightly familiar with <laughs> uh, from the 2020 Amy, 2021 Amy 1. So in this problem, we're given a uh, isosceles trapezoid and some distances from A to the lines B, C, C, D, and B, D. 
So for this problem uh the the distances, uh it motivates us to uh use uh set some kind of nice point as an origin and then use a point to line um formula to calculate uh to calculate uh, some stuff by getting some equations. So so for the origin, uh, the best choice of origin, at least in my opinion, is to set it as a foot from the altitude, foot of the altitude from A to C D. So we can take advantage of isosceles trapezoid properties. So the coordinates of A B C D will be relatively nice. So now um, we set A equals zero comma eighteen, B as the, uh, B comma eighteen. C as B plus D comma 18 and D as negative D comma 0. So point of line for uh, A to B D and A to B C gives us that uh, Y is equal to 18. Uh, so sorry, um, we, we first need to solve a um, find the equations of BD and BC. So this is, uh, so BD is this from uh, basic computations, and BC is y equals 18 over negative d times x minus b minus d. So now point to line uh, from A to BD gives that gives us that 10 is equal to uh, negative um, negative 18b over square root of 324 plus b plus d squared and eight uh, sorry 15 is equal to uh, negative 18b over square root of 324 plus b squared. Now we can rearrange this to get the uh, square root of 324 plus b plus d squared is equal to 9 over 5 times b and 324 plus d squared is equal to 6 over 5 times b. So now from squaring both sides, we'll get something uh, 324 plus b squared plus 2bd plus d squared is equal to 81 over 25b squared. And 324d squared plus d squared is equal to 36 over 25b squared. Now from here, uh, what we do is that we can uh, subtract these two equations. I guess that d is equal to 2 fifths times b. Now from here, it's pretty straightforward to plug this into, say, uh, say into this equation over here. And then get that b, uh, here, I'll, uh, I'll erase some stuff. Sorry. Uh, we'll get that uh, b is equal to uh, 45 over square root of 2 uh, over 4, and d is equal to 9 square root of 2 over 2. So this is our answer. And then after here, um, it's pretty straightforward to compute um, the area of the trapezoid to be 567 over square root of 2. So our answer is 567. Okay, so that's the end of the lecture. Uh, thank you for watching it and make sure to like and subscribe.